Today we're going to do a video on Ma Kali or Kali, the mother of the universe. And before we get started, real quick, if you want to help support my work, you could look in the description and donate to my Patreon account. Check out my website, becomingnobody.org, and subscribe and hit the little notification bell if you want to be notified about videos. So I'm humbled, a little nervous, and super excited to do a video on Kali. And before I get, I'll show up on the screen a picture of Kali. And Kali is a deity that has became very close in my life. Although I feel like my devotion to Kali pales in comparison to many others, I'm sure, and know that it does. But I, I have a Kali tattoo, and I've been studying Kali a lot lately because Ram Dass introduced me to her. And growing up in Western Judeo-Christian society, you always think of God pretty much as the Father, God the Father. And so in Hinduism and in those type of beliefs and, and a lot of other mystical traditions, God can also be thought of as the mother because God is beyond father and mother. But generally in Hindu philosophy and in this train of thought, this school, Kali is the mother of the universe or Kali is this form, the Shakti, which is the energy that is the world we can see. And then her husband Shiva, which is the father, is the formless. And the formless is that which is beyond that which is beyond this universe, beyond this reality that we can see. And they're really the same ultimately, but it's deline delineating these two separate aspects. But anyway, so Kali is appears gruesome with a chain full of skulls often depicted with a scimitar and a dagger in her hand, sometimes standing on her husband's body after she slaughtered demons, blood dripping down her face, her tongue sticking out. You could see her bare breasts. She's very, looks destructive and she is the destroyer as well. But then why is she worshiped? Why is she worshiped by so many out of love? Well, because she embraces all the aspects of the universe that there's death and destruction and also that there is life and bliss and Kali can come with her sword and dagger if you ask and cut out those things which separate you from God so to become to become one with Kali to really understand her she has to cut out your attachments and so when I got involved with Kali worship was through and first let me get this explained first you could say so is Kali a real deity is she not real well of course all the deities are real and of course they're not real as well because it's all it's all conception it's all falls within the play of the universe it's all ultimately one ultimately you're one with her but speaking the way that I see things like is this camera real? Am I making this video real? If you'd say yes to that, then yes, Kali is real. And so, and one other thing is like over time in lots of different religious and spiritual traditions, deities, gods, and goddesses, they get called by different names. But if you look at like the Greeks or if you look at the Hindus or people in the Egyptian, Egyptian times, um, sometimes it's the same deities. They just call by different names. But so Kali is this image of the mother, so tender and so caring, but so frightful, so scary. And how I got involved was I wanted to progress as quick as possible on my spiritual path. So I would call for Kali to help me, to help rid me of my attachments. Now you have to be careful in doing so because it's sort of like an advanced course. It's sort of like a quicker course in which things will come up in your life. Like there'll be more pain probably. There'll be more suffering. There'll be more challenges. So what Ram Dass used to say about Kali is you can ask, but don't, don't ask you that unless you're ready and willing for this to come, unless you're ready and willing for this to be the case. And the other thing that attracted me to Kali was showing that death and destruction are a part of what is as much as we'd like them not to be as much as we like to think that they're wrong or they're not supposed to be, they are. And any conception of God which doesn't take this into account is ultimately 
flawed. I, I'd hate to say it, but it's ultimately flawed. Any conception of the universe of God, which says that only the good is God and the bad is not God, or God is good, not good, not God is not good. It's sad to say, but that's not the case. All things come from God. And it says that even in Isaiah in the Old Testament. God says, I make the darkness and the light. I, the Lord, um, God, do all these things. And I'll put the quote up here because I didn't read, I didn't say the full quote. I know there's an extra line to it. But <clears throat> it's not quoted often in Christianity. But God right there says, all things come from me. And also says in other parts of the Bible, I am the Lord thy God and there is none else. There's nothing else. It's all of the Lord thy God. Even ideas of devils, ideas of demons, ideas of good and evil, yin and yang, it's all falls within the one. So you have to embrace that. And that's why Kali worshipers will often sit at crematorium grounds in India and watch the dead bodies get burned or sit with um, a skull in their meditation because they have to embrace that part of reality as well. But then Kali's also... Mm. <laughs> what I've also got the hunch of is that Kali is so sweet and so loving and so tender. And I, I just read a book on her recently and there's so many love poems to Kali. And the famous Indian saint Sri Ramakrishna was a devotee of Kali. And there's so many beautiful songs written to her as the mother of the universe, saying that this whole world is but Kali's play of form. And since Kali is so powerful, devotees of Kali are said to be granted the boon, the gift, the reward of, of fearlessness, of courage, because Kali is fearless and Kali represents that aspect of God. And so for me, delving into this is a... um. Kali is an interesting path, and it's not one that a lot of people can handle going down. But it is, um, it is beautiful and it is joyous. And I am a new to the Kali devotion, and, and there's mantras that you can use to invoke to feel closer to her. Um, Kali Ma Jai Kali, which means Hail Kali, or Om cream Kali and you can look them up as well and there's lots of literature about her but uh, you know I'm just starting on this idea this practice of getting closer to Kali and now here's a break with a message from our sponsors are you tired of paying too much to H&R Block or others to prepare your tax return are you finally done pulling your hairs out over TurboTax or worrying about whether you completed your form 1040 correctly well, worry no longer. With Mom Silvic Tax and Accounting, you're in great hands. With over 35 years of experience and over 250 clients to show for, CPA Mile Mom Silvic is the accountant you can trust. Straightforward, inexpensive, professional. All it takes is three easy steps. Step one, email or text us for more information. Step two, receive an invite email to load your data. Step three, review and sign your returns electronically in a safe and secure way. The best part about it, he can do your taxes and accounting no matter what state you're in. If you want a knowledgeable licensed expert, he's your guy. With tax returns starting at $125 for single filers and $150 for joint filers, you are guaranteed a fair price and excellent service. Stop the worrying and leave it up to the professional. Email Mele at info at momsilvicaccounting.com. Text him at 773-578-0996 or go to momsilvicaccounting.com. Website link and contact information can be found in the description below. To learn more, follow Mom Silvic Tax and Accounting on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Also, if you have any tax or accounting related questions, feel free to contact Mele free of charge. Start your journey of a stress-free tax season today. And on a funny note, I actually got a tattoo of Kali, as I mentioned in the beginning, and it's funny for two reasons. One, um, the pain, and that was the interesting part. I, I've gotten many tattoos, and this one hurt excruciatingly bad, and it was probably supposed to take three sessions, and it's been like eight sessions. I've done well over 20 hours on it, maybe 25 or 30. Costed me way more than expected. Hurt 
excruciatingly bad. Been crying during it. For some reason, taking forever. The healing's been terrible. Um, basically, the worst tattoo experience you could ever have. And I thought from the beginning that this is interesting because this is what I get for getting Kali tattooed. And I realized the irony of it. Yes, it's on my side and tattoos can be tough there. But I know that's not the reason. I know... It's because of it being a Kali tattoo that the pain's been brought into my life. So just an interesting and funny example of the suffering I've put myself through. And so basically, I just want to say it, this is important to me because, like I said, in the West, we always think of God as he, as the father. And that's just a thought. It's just a conception. So like, and it's, it must be tough for women, too, because it's never thought of as goddess or mother in the west in form formally and so that's just that's why i wanted to learn about feminine aspects of god of seeing god or goddess as the mother and that's why i think it's important to kind of delve into these things a little bit um christians could say it's blasphemy or something like that but it is not it is just another way of understanding god it's just another way of understanding the universe because deities exist just as angels and demons exist. The gods and goddesses exist. Gods of the wind and of the sun that exists. It's just, it's easier to just talk about God as one because God ultimately is one and it all falls in with that. But just how you exist now. I mean, if your overarching desire is to one day be God of some moon, your soul can one day be God of that moon. I mean, go for it. That intention will eventually manifest and spring in your life. But it just, it all falls within God. So those things aren't as interesting as you might think. And that's what, um, that's what keeps beings in the circle of repeated birth and death, even on astral planes and other planes, is they get caught wanting to be, they're better desires. It's more pleasure. Longer lifespans, better pleasure than here on earth. So, you can get caught in that too, but it ultimately still all falls within God. But it is real. It's just as real as this is real. So it's not ultimately real. It's relatively real, but it's just as just as real as me touching this, just as real as me being in this room. So yeah, I would just encourage anyone that has any conception of God, especially if you've never been exposed to the idea of God as the feminine or as a woman or as mother, Take a look at that form, those forms. Take a look at Kali or in any other form. Um, and like I said, the Kali path for me so far has been a beautiful one. You just, you be careful when you ask for Kali to come and burn out your attachments to bring you to God. Because if you ask for it, then it's going to happen.